So sampling. Sampling is how you get your participants uh, and what you're hoping is that your participants are going to be representative. They're going to represent the population that they're from um, for your study and in your results and then you're going to be able to apply the findings that you get from your study to other members of that population. This happens across all the sciences. Um, so think maybe in chemistry where we know now that if we heat water up to 100 degrees C uh, it will boil. Uh, and so that was that would have been tested. They would have tried that once or twice when, when it was first discovered um, and they found wow look we've got boiling water great. Let's see if that applies to other bits of water as well. Um, and now we know it's common knowledge because it's been a consistent finding that's been replicated, that's objective, that's observable, all these things that, that feed into science. And now it's an accepted understanding theory, hypothesis, that water boils, unless there's something else in it, uh, at 100 degrees C. We're wanting the same in psychology, really. So we're wanting rules about human thinking and human behaviour, whether that's uh, how memory works, whether it's how an infant attaches to its parent, social psychology, any number of issues that, that we look at on the course and outside the course. We want to know about human thinking and behaviour. Well, it's unrealistic to test every human. But what we want to do is test samples of humans uh, and apply the results to other people. And again, that, that happens. So not all of the water in the world has been boiled to 100 degrees for us to, in commas, know uh, that that happens. So we're trying to do the same here. So we need to take a sample of people um, before we do our study. And there are five main ways that you need to be aware that we can sample participants, that we can get people into our study um, to do our to do our study, to carry it out, find results and, and hopefully then apply it. The first of those is known as random sampling. So random sampling sounds very easy, oh we'll just randomly get someone, let's get people, but actually it's one of the most involved methods um, and actually the key is that all members of the target population have a chance of being selected. Um, so what that means is whatever your target population is, so you will have a target for your study, that might be uh, children at a particular school or college, but it could be people in a, in a certain county or country. Um, so your target population, you would have to get a list of all the people on that target population, and then they have to have an equal chance of getting selected. So in the old days, that would be all their names would go into a hat, and you'd pick out the, say you'd need 50, the 50 names that you would need. Um, the more modern way is that there are things called random number generators now. So basically the list of names would all go into a, a computer program, a spreadsheet, uh, you can press a button and it would pick out 50 for you at random, making sure there's no connections between them. Um, opportunity sampling is the next type. This is probably the most commonly used type of sampling. So this is where you, you use the opportunity that's available. You take the people that are there at the time. So this is quite often used in psychological uh, experiments where um, the psychologists are professors at universities and they would get their participants from the, their classes. So they would just use the people that were there. This would be you turning up um, onto a, a high street and asking people to fill in your questionnaire. That's opportunity sampling. You're taking the opportunity to use the people that are there in front of you. Then you've got volunteer sampling. Uh, opportunity and volunteer are often confused. The thing you need to be aware of is that in volunteer sampling, the people are volunteering to take part. Um, they're coming to you. So basically you would put posters up, you might actually physically put posters up, or you could email out or have uh, adverts online, uh, and then people would contact you saying, oh, I'd like to take part in that study. So volunteer is different to opportunity because actually the participants are coming to you, you're not going to them. Uh, then you've got systematic. Uh, this is where you choose every fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh person, every nth person um, from a list. So this is like random in that all you'd need a list of all the members of your target population, but it's a different way of selecting them. Obviously with random, you're, you're randomly selecting them, whereas with systematic, you're, you're using a, a method, a different method, every, every nth person. And then last but not least, we've got stratified sampling, um, and for the any geologists amongst you, um, You've got stratas of rock, they're different levels. So that's what we're looking for here. So what we want is that our 
the people that we're using in our study are representative, proportionally representative from the sample we take them from. So that term there, that target population, that's actually quite a key term. So whatever you're, ta if you're using an office at a particular workplace, and you find that in that target population there are 70% male and 30% and female, and you want 10 participants in your study, you're going to need to make sure you have 10 males and 3 females. Hopefully that makes sense. But it doesn't have to be on gender, it could be on anything, any number of characteristics. It could be social economic group, it could be ethnic background, it could be uh, IQ, but your the sample that you are using represents your your target population based on, on, on those levels. So those are the different methods. Again, you're very unlikely to be asked what is random sampling, what is opportunity sampling. That would be AO1. You still need to know these things, uh, and you could get asked it, but I, I think that from my experience of seeing exam papers, you're less likely to get asked a question like that. Much more likely is either the AO2 or the AO3. So you're asked to uh, identify which sampling method has been used in the STEM. In, in a hypothetical study, or you're asked to use your, your knowledge of sampling to explain how the, the, the psychologist might carry out a sampling method. Um, and then the AO3, you need to know the good things and the bad things about these different types of sampling methods. So going back to the top then, random sampling. So this these key terms, um, your target population, representativeness is what we're aiming for generally when we, when we do a sample. So as I said at the start, you want your results to be able to be generally generalized, again, another key term, generalizability, you want to be able to generalize your findings to other people. Um, and to do that, the people that you use need to represent that target population. And if they do that, then you've got better representation, you've got better generalizability. And random sampling tends to, a bit of a uh, caveat there, but tends to produce quite representative uh, samples. And so that's a good thing. However, weakness doesn't always do that you could actually accidentally you could have your your list of a couple of thousand people at a college um, and you want to, to pick out 10 people at random or 50 people at random but actually end up with all one gender or all one social economic group or all one racial group and and that might bias your results you can't then apply that to other genders or social economic group or races or, or whatever it may be um, and so you've gone through a lot of effort to try and make your sample representative and, and you still haven't. You should be putting yourself in the shoes of the researcher when you're thinking about research methods question, what would you actually do in that study? And if you think about it, this is quite an involved, time consuming, it would take a lot of effort to do this method. Um, and so that could potentially be seen as a, as a negative. It, it takes a lot of time. Um, you could end up missing people off uh, of your list, so you want all the, all your target population. Again, if you've got a school or college, there'll probably be registers and things. But if your target population is a, is a county or a country, it's going to be very, very hard for you to, to accurately get a list of everyone. And then, and this, it doesn't matter uh, whether it's a college or a country, but just because they're on your list and they, they come up in your random sample doesn't mean they have to take part in your study. They've still got choice in this, uh, hopefully. hopefully. <laughs> you need to check the ethics video if, if you're unsure on that, but they should still have a, a say in whether they take part. Consent is important. Um, and then, and so that's the issue of random sampling. So what we get is most studies using this opportunity sampling. And again, thinking about it as a researcher, it's easy, it's less expensive, it's less time consuming. And so this is the one that, that most people go for. However, you t generally get a less representative sample. And again, we've got quite often we get our strengths and weaknesses are the opposites of each other, like in designs and um, experimental methods you've got here. So actually, this tends opportunity sampling tends to be less representative. If you go into a town centre on a Tuesday uh, afternoon, you're going to get people that can be in a town centre on Tuesday afternoon. So they might be retired, they might be unemployed, uh, they might be mothers with the young children. That doesn't represent the whole population in terms of people that are working and can't be there. Um, and again, if it's raining, you might only get a certain type of person that, that comes out in the in the rain. So your sample, you potentially have a sample bias here, and you have unrepresentative sample. And so that's a bit of a balancing act, a way off. Um, you have to weigh up the the strengths and weaknesses there. Volunteer sampling. So this is where you're putting adverts up. 
the best thing about this is that you can target populations. And what I mean by that is your study will be on something. Um, if it's on memory, then it doesn't really matter. You, you don't necessarily need to target it. But if your study is on attachment and you need newborn babies and their mothers, well, you're not everyone's going to fall into that category. You're going to need to target your population. So actually, you might go into a, uh, a maternity ward and put up posters, and you, you're then more likely to get the people that you need. If you need some fatties for a study into obesity, you could put up your posters in McDonald's. Um, and so you're getting people that actually you need for your study. So that's a real uh, positive. However, again, we're, we're losing some representativeness here and so you have sample bias, volunteer bias. So it takes a very special person, very special person, uh, to say that they, one, want to take part in a psychology experiment, that they've got time to do it, that, you know, they might not get, be getting paid. And actually lots of people might not take part. And so, again, you're the you're not testing the people that you want to test because actually you want to test everyone whether they want to take part or not um, and so you've got volunteer bias there's something about people that volunteer for studies that might be different to other people and so it makes it hard for you to uh, apply your findings next we've got the systematic so again that's where you get the list of everyone and then you're choosing every nth person um, the best thing about this is you've got no researcher bias and what I mean by that so actually I didn't mention this in the opportunity sampling but when you're going up to people in the street you're probably not going to go up to the guy that stinks of urine and that you're a bit scared of in the street um, because that's not very nice so you're going to go up to the nice well-dressed smart person so there's potentially researcher bias there in selecting your participants whereas you wouldn't get that in systematic because they're being selected via a different method. And that's why you would use this method, every nth person, um, because it selects them for you. But again, you could it could just be random that every nth person is a certain gender, certain um, social economic background, and that could affect your results. And again, similar to uh, the random sampling, people might refuse to take part even if they're you know, on your um, on your list so you've gone to all the effort and you're still not getting the people that you want last but not least then we've got stratified sampling so this is where you take a rep a uh, representative proportion of people. So, as you can imagine, the the best thing about this study is it is one of the more representative um, sampling types. You're, you're going out to try to get a representation of, in your study, how many people are there. So you'd need to work out the percentages in the target population of whatever variable it is that, that you're um, looking to be representative, whether Again, gender, IQ, uh, not, n amount of exercise that they do, um, you would want that represented in, in the sample that you're using. There could be 2,000 people in, in a company, you need 20 or 50 people, so you need proport the same proportion, the same percentages of whatever the thing is you've chosen in your target population. And again, it's avoiding this research bias, which is great. However, again, nothing seems to be <laughs> um, straightforward and rosy. You're going, to, again, to a lot of effort. Think about yourself as a researcher here. Are you actually going to do this? Yeah, you can, and, and it has been used. However, you're never going to be able to represent the complexities of how people are different. So all of the... We've, I've mentioned a few things, gender and social economics, they just think that. But there are a number of different ways that people differ, and you're never going to be able to represent all of them. And so you're going through all this effort to try and make it representative, and... and it's almost an impossible task. So again, you've got to weigh that up. Okay, so that was sampling. I hope it was helpful.